What's up, everybody? Welcome to another uh, ranking video. Uh, but today I will be uh, doing something a little different. I'm going to be ranking every movie I watched in January 2023. Um, every movie that is every movie I watched for the first time in January 2023. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I decided to do this because, uh, for one thing, I kept not I, well I kept uh trying to you know put out a a uh, re, a a movie review but um uh, I don't know I tried three other movies I tried three other movies and I just felt like I just didn't feel like I well okay two of them I felt like I didn't have anything to say and then one of them I felt like uh Maybe I'll save that for a episode of Your Cousins or Critics. I do with my cousin Cade. But, um, so, yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, doing movie, reviewing movies, at least on my own at the moment, is kind of difficult. And um, the other reason why I wanted to do this is because also, at the beginning of the year, I was going to do a ranking, like a live stream where I ranked every single movie that I watched for the first time in 2022, but I decided not to do that because it'll take, you know, it'll take too long. There's so many movies, and, you know, stuff like that. It was kind of a pain in the ass even to make the list. Um, so, so instead, I, um, as of right now, I'm, I'm going to, for every month, at, at the beginning of every month, I am going to uh, do a ranking of every movie I watched for the first time of the month before. So, this is uh, February. I am um, I am going to uh, rank every movie that I watched for the first time in January of of uh, twenty twenty three. Yes. So, all right. So uh, there are ten movies that I watched for the first time in January. 2023 there might be less and others um just as long as there's more than two then i'll do a ranking even if there's three i'll do it but um but yeah you know and this will give me an excuse to you know somewhat review these movies even if i don't have a whole lot to say but you know in one video i'll review these movies so uh and of course rank them. but yeah um so anyways um I hope you'll enjoy these uh, these videos. So, all right, let's uh, go ahead and get started, shall we? Um, ten, yes, there's ten of them. Let's starting with number ten. Okay, so coming in at number ten, my least favorite movie I watched for the first time in January. Uh, you know, and of course, keep in mind these are my personal opinions. My number ten is Get Shorty, uh, released in I want to say 1990 and was directed by Barry Sonnenfeld and stars uh, John Travolta, uh, Gene Hackman, Rene Russo, and um, uh, D Dane DeVito, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a beloved film. Uh, a lot of people like this movie. I didn't love it, honestly. I didn't hate it. Even though this is my least favorite, I didn't hate this movie. I thought it was okay at best. But I was honestly kind of disappointed from this film. Because, uh, yeah, this was actually one of the movies I was trying to review. But this was one of the two that I just felt like I didn't have anything to say about it. At least not a whole lot to say about it. And even the other one I liked a lot better I still didn't really have a whole lot to say about it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, you know, this is a, a a comedy mafia movie with John Travolta as Chili Palmer, who is a mob mobster, and he uh, decides he wants to get into the movie business. Uh, you know, I've heard really good things about this movie, so I was disappointed when I watched this movie because I thought I was going to like it, and I didn't love i didn't really like it that much it was i don't know the story honestly on paper it sounds good but it, it just didn't really work for me unfortunately and the humor was hit or miss uh there were some good moments there were some funny moments um i thought gene hackman was actually really funny in the movie but i don't know it just 
yeah. And plus Dan DeVito, I love Dan DeVito, but he wasn't in it enough. So yeah. Um, but I will say, you know, performances were good. All those actors I just mentioned, uh, even John Travolta, and I'm not even a big John Travolta fan. He was good, though. He was very good. Um, performances is probably the best. I'll give it, uh, you know, probably the strongest thing about the movie. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, it just didn't work for me. So, yeah, that's uh, why it's my number 10. Okay, so coming in at number 9 is a, a uh, Paul Thomas Anderson movie that I watched uh, because I'm working on a Paul Tom Sanderson ranking. Um, I think I have another one on here, too. Yeah, that will be much later because, uh, because I liked it a lot better. But this one, my number nine is uh, from 2012, The Master. Yeah, um, starring Joaquin Phoenix, um, Phil Philip Seymour Hoffman, Amy Adams, uh, Rami Malek, and um, Jesse Plemons. But, yeah, this movie... Eh, I don't know. I was mixed on this movie. I think this is kind of a divisive movie anyways. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was a little bit too weird for me, if I'm going to be honest. And, of course, I love weird movies, but I don't know. This was just a little bit too weird. Um, although I will say, of course, the performances are very good, especially Joaquin Phoenix. He was really good in this movie. But his character was a bit, a little too strange for me. I didn't really, I thought his character was just so weird and I just didn't understand his character. Um, and I didn't really understand the story either. So I'm not really going to say what it's about because honestly, I don't really know what this movie is about. Like, I really don't. But again, like Get Shorty, the I think the biggest praise I can give it are the performances. And even the, I'll, I'll even say the cinematography was good too. I like the cinematography. Um, and there are some moments that were kind of entertaining, but for the most part, this movie was a little bit boring. And I just, I don't know. I didn't really dig it. I'm sorry, those of y'all who love this movie, I just wasn't a fan of The Master. And that is uh, my number nine. Okay, my coming in at number eight is a movie that maybe a lot of people might not have heard of. Um, it's, it's an 80s comedy uh, called Club Paradise, and I believe it came out in the year 1986 and was directed by Harold Ramis, and it stars Rob Williams, um, uh, Rick Moranis, and Eugene Levy. Um, yeah, I was watching this because I'm also working on a... Um, Harold Ramis uh, director ranking video. Um, and yeah, this one, I put this higher than Get Shorty and uh, The Master because this movie was actually pretty funny. I will give it that. This movie was pretty funny. I mean, it was hit or miss, but I gotta say, there might have been more hits than misses. But what didn't do it for me was the story. Like, I don't know. It just felt very bland to me. But, um, but other than that, it was actually a pretty funny movie. And Ron Williams was very good in the film. I mean, it's Ron Williams. When is he not great? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, Call of Paradise, uh, that is my number eight. Okay, my number seven is a movie that uh, me and Cade were going to review for uh, Your Cousins Are Critics. But we didn't get to do it because we ran out of time that day. We watched it, but we didn't have any time to... Uh, record a reaction to it, or a or, or reaction, a, a review for it. Um, but we did watch it, and I will, and we talked a little bit about it in our hereditary uh, episode. But, but um, I'll talk a little bit about it here. Uh, that is, don't look now. Um, I forgot what year it came out, but I know it's somewhere in the seventies, and it stars uh, uh, Donald Sutherland. And this is a, uh, I guess you can call this like a psychological horror film. And it's, um, the story is pretty interesting, kind of. Uh, it's pretty cool. And, um, but I do kind of feel like, I said this in that episode of Your Cousins Are Critics and the Hereditary episode, uh, but I did feel like, I do feel like this movie could get a remake, honestly. Like, I would actually want a remake to this movie. But, yeah, it was kind of a cool movie, just about this. Uh, although, I will say, this was a very sad movie. Um, 
it was just a, it's about this couple uh who just lost their daughter and they're just you know trying to trying to move on but it's hard yeah it's it's pretty weird it's a pretty weird movie um doll's all the one's good and the actress who plays his wife was good too i forgot who played his wife but um yeah um it was a good movie i just kind of wish it would be better if it was remade maybe um if maybe i mean it depends you know remakes eh, lately remakes haven't been that great so you know but um i would actually like to see a remake to this movie and um yeah and also the ending no spoilers but the ending is very very depressing <laughs> so yeah um yeah don't look now that is uh number seven okay number six is the uh other the one of the other t uh movies i watched that uh i was going to review and this is the other movie that i just didn't have a whole lot to say about it but i did enjoy this movie to an extent uh that is uh, Whip It, uh, released in 2009, I think, and and was directed by Drew Barrymore and also stars Drew Barrymore along with Elliot Page and Juliette Lewis, uh, Kristen Wiig, uh, or Kirsten Wiig, I don't know how to say her name, um, and, uh, and, oh, Zoe Bell as well. It was a lot of people, actually. Daniel Stern was in it, too. Um yeah this movie uh was i thought it was pretty good but could have been better uh but it was good for what it was i thought the performances were definitely the standout especially from elliot page and um and julia lewis i thought they were the standouts for sure in this film um but i did have my issues with it you know not everything worked in it uh like story wise and stuff but it, it's a pretty good movie and elliot page he was he was fantastic in this film um but yeah um yeah pretty good movie i see i just don't have a whole lot to say about it um just could have been better but yeah whip it that is uh number six okay number five is a movie i actually as of i'm recording this as yeah as of right now as when i'm recording this i actually watched this on the i'm recording this on february 1st and I watched this um, just yesterday on uh, January 31st. Um, this is another um, Harold Ramis movie. It is, a, it is another one you might not have heard of. It's called, um, hopefully I can say this right, uh, multi Multiplicity. I, I hope I said that right, Multiplicity. Uh, it came out in 96, I want to say. And uh, it stars Michael Keaton and Andy McDowell. Um, and also Eugene Levy was in it as well. Um, and, um, I actually really liked this movie. I thought it was really funny. Um, this is about Michael Keaton. He's a family man and he, um, he, uh, decides to clone himself, uh, because he, uh, you know, he, he's a very busy man. He, he has, you know, he has to work, but he also wants to spend time with his family uh, with his wife and kids, so he clones himself, and he does more than one clone, too, and, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy, I mean, this, this has been done a bunch, of course, this idea, but, I don't know, I actually really enjoyed this movie, I thought it was really funny, um, and, um, it was actually more hits than misses, too, it, for the most part, it really made me laugh, um, there are some kind of cringy moments in the film and, and some stuff that didn't age well, but you know, but for the most part, it was pretty good. I, um, or at least I enjoyed it very, very much. Um, and, um, also the big thing about this movie is definitely Michael Keaton's performance. He was very, very good in this film and not only as the main character, but also the clones as well. He, he was great. Um, but yeah, definitely one of his best performance, in my opinion, of what I've seen from him. But yeah, um, yeah, very good movie. I actually highly recommend it. It's a, uh, I, I think it's underrated. Um, yeah, multiplicity. That is number five. Okay, now we're getting to the really good stuff. So yeah, 
Coming in at number four, we have another Paul Thomas Anderson film, and it's actually his debut film. That is Hard Eight, uh, released in 1996, starring um, John C. Riley, Samuel L. Jackson, and um, also, uh, what's her name? Gwyneth Paltrow. And I forgot, was it Philip Baker Hall? Is that his name? I think so. He plays the main character, Sydney. But, um, yeah, um, you know, I watched this for the first time for the Paul T- for the PTA ranking, and I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was really good, uh, especially for a debut film. And I think it's pretty underrated. Not a lot of people talk about this movie, and even whenever they do talk about it, which I don't ever hear bad things about it, I just hear it's pretty good or it's decent or whatever. But no, I thought it was like really good. I I really enjoyed it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, about um, Philip Baker Hall meets uh, John C. Riley, who is a homeless man, and he uh, he helps him get him get him on his feet, and he like helps him like uh, win at gambling and stuff. It's really cool. It's a really good movie. I um uh, I highly recommend it. Um, uh, I um. Uh, uh, this was actually the very first movie I watched for the new year, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I even, honestly, I think I even like this better than Boogie Nights, which was his, uh, you know, follow up to this film, PTA's follow up. But yeah, I actually liked it better than Boogie Nights. I I know that might be crazy to say, but yeah, Part Eight, very good film, and that is uh, number four. Okay, coming in at number three, we have. Uh, from 2006, we have A Scanner Darkly, directed by Richard Linklater, starring Robert Downey Jr., um, Connor Reeves, Woody Harrelson, and Winona Ryder. Um, yeah, this was a... I really enjoyed this one. Uh, this is an animated film. This is a, He's done three animated films. I've seen the other two, uh, Apollo 10 and a half, which I thought was was really good, and, um, and also Waking Life, which... Eh, I was kind of mixed on that movie. I didn't love it, but it was fine. Um, but this one is my favorite out of, the, out of the three animated films he's done. This one was really good. And the fact, I think it's really interesting that he chose this to be animated. Because it could have been live action. Uh, but he chose it to be animated. You can barely even tell it's animated because the animation is phenomenal. Like, First of all, like all those actors I just mentioned... Like, their characters look exactly like them, so that kind of makes it kind of a little bit hard to even tell what's animated at times. Um, but, um, yeah, but animation, like I said, is great. Uh, all the performances are very good. Even Connor Reeves. I don't even like Connor Reeves that much uh, as an actor, but, but sometimes he can surprise me. Like he did in uh, that Sam Raimi movie, The Gift. He was really good in that movie and i thought he was really good in this movie too um and of course robert downey jr uh winona writer woody harrelson i i i like them i i always like them usually anyways well rdj eh, every now and again i like him but but i yeah he was really good in this one and woody harrelson was really funny in this movie and one on winona writer too was great as always but um no, it's a really good movie. It's really good. I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it. Um, it might still be on YouTube for free, so check it out if you haven't, if it's still there. That's where I saw it, at least. But yeah, uh, Scanner Darkly, that is number three. Okay, coming in at number two is a movie I already talked about with uh, Cade and uh, our episode of Your Cousins Their Critics. That is, of course... Hereditary, uh, released in 2018, uh, uh, directed by Ari Aster, starring uh, Tony Collette, Alex Wolf, and Gabriel Byrne. Um, yeah, this movie is fantastic. I'm not going to say too much about it. If you want to hear me and Kay talk about it, go watch our video. But this movie is fantastic. Very fucked up, but fantastic. And yeah, this is definitely... Excuse me, this is definitely a movie that um, I would definitely watch again. And one more thing, Toni Collette, amazing performance. Without a doubt, she's definitely the standout on this film. But yeah, Hereditary, that is number two. Alright, and that would be my number one if it wasn't for this one. So, my number one 
favorite movie that I watched for the first time in January 2023 is Ex Machina. Yes, Ex Machina released in 2015, star or, or yeah, directed by written and directed by Alex Garland, starring Alicia Alicia Van Kander, uh, Donald Gleason, and um, Oscar Isaac. Yes, um, this was the movie. This was one of the. This was the the other of the three films I was wanting to um, that I was wanting to review, and I was really close of reviewing this movie. Um, I even started recording it, um, but uh, I don't know. I just kept fucking up in the recording, so I just eh. and I was like, you know what? Maybe I should save this for a Your Cousins Are Critics episode because I don't think Kate has seen it yet. Um, so look out for that. If you, if, if you want to hear me review this movie, look out for that um, uh, review of Ex Machina with Kate. Um, so yeah, um, but I will give a little bit of, of a review right now. So yeah, th this movie was fantastic. Um, I didn't really expect much going into this film. Like, I was kind of watching this thinking that I wasn't going to like it too much. But then I saw the A24 logo at the beginning. I'm like, okay, this should be good. Then. And, yeah, it was great. Um, really awesome science fiction movie about artificial intelligence. And uh, all those actors I just mentioned, Donald Gleason, uh, Alicia Van Kander, and, um, and Oscar Isaac, they're all great. Um my my favorite was actually uh, Alicia Van Kander. I thought she like she stole the show for me, and I really liked her character Ava. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much. Uh, you know, right now I just you know sometime we'll hopefully we'll do a uh, your cousins or critics episode. Uh, hopefully sometime we will. Um, but yeah. Um, I really enjoyed Ex Machina. I thought it was amazing. Like, almost, maybe even close to the masterpiece. Maybe even a masterpiece. I don't know, but it's, I loved it. I loved Ex Machina. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, um, Ex Machina is my number one favorite movie that I watched in the year, in the month of January 2023. Yeah. All right, there we go. There is uh, my ranking for every movie I watched for the first time in January two twenty twenty three. Uh, so in the comments, um, I guess you could uh, if if you've seen any of these movies or all of them or whatever, give your favorite, least favorite movies of what I just mentioned. Um, and also maybe if you want, maybe give your uh, ranking of every movie you watched. Uh, first time watched in 2023 or January of 2023. Um, I would be curious to know what you've seen that, uh, this month for the first time. So yeah. Um, all right. So please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell. And I'll see you later. All right.